Welcome to the Ron You and Duran podcast show. I'm Ron You. I'm Duran. In today's episode, I'd like to see if we can't start off with the discussion on eating. 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 That sounds like a very interesting topic, <laughs> um, especially when you haven't ate yet. <laughs> yes. So a lot of people go through and they say things like um, abs are made in the kitchen. I would prefer it said abs are revealed in the kitchen because they're actually made by uh, just walking around, moving around, things of that nature. And just what you eat helps to either reveal them or hide them. And I, I would be curious if we can't have some discussion, first of all, just on eating in general, and then eating within the context of being happy and healthy and that relationship between food and general well-being and happiness, especially in the modern age where number one, we have a, a barrage, constant barrage of choices, many of which are suboptimal and actually not good for us. So if we can have some discussion around your thoughts on what is appropriate and how to find the the most appropriate foods and then maybe how to get on track with a diet that will make you successful and of course by diet we don't mean you know those temporary faddish things we mean an actual thing that is a lifestyle for you how you eat and what you eat when you eat what you drink things of that nature Right. This is definitely going to be different, um, and it may help other people who are like me, because I'm weird. Um, so basically, I don't like calling it a diet. I like to call it a nutrition plan, because um, when people see diets, they think of diet as a temporary thing, as you just said, and I don't like that. So the nutrition plan is a lifestyle, and it's something that you can actually carry on for the rest of your life. So for my specific preference, I'm in between a vegan slash vegetarian, and I've always been like that since I was little. Do not really like meat as much, but I will, I will eat some meat, but eh, it's every so often. Then that may be when I have a cheat meal. So it's going to be different for people depending on what what you like, what your preference is. So for me, in particular, it had been hard when, especially as I started trying to, you know, body build, getting into the body build builder mode or mentality. It was harder trying to figure out what foods I can actually eat that would help build muscle. And that's and especially when you're talking about abs, since everybody says abs are made in the kitchen, which it has been hard to to specify for me, especially being a natural, because, yeah, you say abs are made in the kitchen. But even if I'm eating all of the right thing, that doesn't seem like the abs are really going to show unless you actually put in the work and you still have to train abs, too. You can't just say, oh, abs are made in the kitchen and you don't go train them. They're not just going to re magically appear. You're not going to just always just get to that, you know, body percentage so they can show. They do have to be worked on also as well. So with that being said, you have to pick the foods that work in, you know, with your particular nutrition plan. So for me, I, my how I get my protein is through beans, lentils, um, you know, maybe chickpeas. You know, then I'll eat that and, you know, eggs. So I kind of mix all of those things up together and especially uh, egg whites. They're not the best, but they're, they'll get me enough protein for the day. But I don't need that much because of what I'm eating a day. Now, I used to eat six meals a day. Then I switched it down because my stomach had got smaller to at least three meals a day because that's as, all, that's as much as I can eat. But that's still enough protein for me during the day with all of the eggs, the beans, the lentils, and black beans, per se, um, that will help me get to that desired protein um, limit that I need. So I don't need too much. And a lot of people go a little bit too crazy with wanting to eat too much protein. You don't need too much protein right. you know, to actually build muscle. But as a natural, it's going to take a longer going to take a longer period of time to actually build muscle than it would be if you're actually on steroids. So for me, that's kind of really all I eat. But I also tell people, especially clients that I work with, that you don't need to cut out everything. Like there's not a lot of good food for you, like pork and different things. But you're going to want to have some of those, you know, good food that you like. But it's about portion, about eating things in moderation and not overdoing. it. And anything that you eat, anything that you overdo can become a bad thing. Right. So. I always tell people that, you know, you want to eat a healthy portion of food, which most people will say you have your fruits, you have your, you know, those different categories, your vegetables and some protein that you prefer. So 
I still say that you should have some of the things that you like in order to sustain sustain the healthy lifestyle and to sustain the body, you know, that you want. So if you don't, then as we said, a, a crash diet will lead you back into that weight that you gained over the years, over the course of the year that you were eating that much or eating the, the wrong types of food. So my biggest thing is I love fries. So uh, I'll add fries, a portion of fries every day to my meal um, and just a portion of it. And it makes me satisfied. And then maybe I'll eat a little bit of, you know, a little slice of cake, a little small slice of cake with a little bit of ice cream to keep me satisfied. I don't need a big slice of cake. I don't need a bunch of fries or a big pizza, even though, you know, that, that Duran likes pizza. So you don't need a lot to keep you satisfied. But if you add a sprinkle those little things in with your diet or your nutrition plan, it would help a lot with motivating you to continue this as a long term lifestyle. And I think that's actually one of the important things is just emphasizing because it cannot be stressed enough that ultimately whatever it is you're after, it, it really needs to be and become something that is your everyday life. I know, so in my case, I actually am allergic to and sensitive to a number of foods and then uh, genetic differences and things of that nature come in, play a, a huge role too. So there are a lot of things in the modern Western diet I cannot eat because it will make me extraordinarily heavy, extraordinarily quickly, or because it makes my joints leak and helps to contribute to my arthritis, things of that nature. So just to give some examples, I can't eat any grains, any what are called cereal grains. So your cereal grains, of course, are rice, corn, wheat, oats, barley, so on and so forth. So anything within that family, anything tied to grass, I can't eat soy because I'm actually allergic uh, and a variety of other products to include things like eggplant because I can't tolerate caffeine. It makes me very nauseous. And so the result is I wind up actually, number one, having to look at the ingredients for everything before I go buy it. Number two, I don't go to restaurants ever. We Everything gets made at home from scratch. Makes it so I don't have to worry about anything because when I do eat the wrong thing, my body lets me know. And it's funny because when I was in my 20s, I think it was, everything came to a head because I was just... Uh, I was very unwell. I got very sick for about two years and it took two years of, uh, I actually threw everything out that we were eating and, and started a new monitoring. You know, I'd sit there and I'd add something, one thing every few weeks and document how it made me feel or how it didn't. And it was a very lengthy process to isolate a lot of the stuff that just made me unwell or caused me issues of one kind or another. And when all was said and done, I actually found out a lot about myself and a lot about my body. And the fact that it does hurt. So once you once you do that and you get to that point where when you eat, it no longer hurts, you start to realize how much all of that stuff actually hurt over the many years when you ate things that you shouldn't have eaten. And of course, everyone happens to be different, but it was an interesting process for me to discover all of that. And then it later on was confirmed with an allergist. Uh, but it, it's funny because that wound up being a very worthwhile exercise for me. And it, it's interesting. So on one side, we had the USDA, right? So the USDA puts out things like the food chart and food pyramid and they do like a plate and some other silly stuff now because apparently a chart you know the pyramid was too complicated i don't know uh, the, but they've they've adjusted their guidelines and what a lot of people don't realize is the usda has dueling and completely opposite missions so on one side it's their mission to go through and advocate for american agriculture 
So that's, of course, your uh, you know, livestock and your fruits and vegetables, right? On the other side, they're supposed to advocate for healthier diets. And those right. things actually are at odds a lot because they get a lot of pressure from all of these organizations saying, oh, well, you can't declare our food unhealthy. You can't declare our food unhealthy. You need to go through and grant us a special favor and, and heaven help the USDA if they decide to, to push forward because those companies then pay off Congress, et cetera, to go through and pitch a giant fit and force the USDA to, to adjust their guidelines. I bring that up because it's actually really relevant to this discussion. My recommendation to everyone is to pay close attention to your body and what, how it feels and how things feel, which means you have to know what it is you're eating. And I think that's one of the biggest mistakes people make is not knowing what it is they're eating. Agreed. I agree that a lot of people don't know what they're eating. And it was the same thing for me, like certain like pasta, like pasta makes me feel bad. It makes me bloated. It gives me gas and it doesn't make me feel good, especially eating pork or even salami, which is all pork and pepperonis, even though I love them on the pizza. That's another thing that kind of would make me feel bad. Um, and it wouldn't make me feel good, especially when I'm in the gym. So if you're eating that stuff and because of how long it takes to digest, um, you're eating that stuff and you're going and trying to perform in a gym, it's not going to be, it's not going to end well. And so pasta and certain things I have to stay away from. Um, vegetables, it's a lot of fiber, especially when you're talking about eating a lot of beans. And in that case, kind of makes you gassy too, but it doesn't make me feel as bad as it does when I'm eating something like pasta or, you know, pork or something like that. That's why I kind of like keep that out of my diet. Now, fish is something, if I'm happy, if I have to eat any like, meats it would be fish which is a really you know good source of protein but it's also if you're talking about trying to lean out they normally from a bodybuilding perspective they normally advise you to eat fish instead of just chicken but either way you just have to know your body you have to know what you're putting in your body which goes back to another uh, example that i wanted to talk about um, one of the examples as you know dan i was talking about um mcdonald's mcdonald's fish sandwich um, my friend, she was eating a fish sandwich and she didn't know that the fish sandwich after all of these years that she hadn't really ate McDonald's, she didn't notice that there were onions uh, that would, you know, that's in the tartar sauce. So out of this day, she's like, when did they make, you know, put onions on, in the fish sandwich? So she calls everybody. She calls all of her friends and she says, her, that's her mom and her other friend and her, her friend's grandmother. And they're like, Fish sandwich doesn't come with onions. And I'm like, yes, I do. So I go and I pull up the ingredients because I look at everything that I, you know, anytime I'm putting anything or drinking anything or anything in my body, I want to know what it, what it was in there. So I, I pull the ingredients up from McDonald's website and it says that in the tartar sauce, there is onions. You know, so it doesn't mean every tartar sauce might come with onions, but a lot of the times they make they put onions in the tartar sauce. They also put it in other things like potato salad and coleslaw. You'll see those things. So the fact that every one of them said that there was no onions on that fish sandwich bothered me because that means to me that you don't pay attention to what you put in your body. And that's the problem because how do you know, you know, what's good for you or what are you allergic to something if you don't even know what's going into your body. If you're allergic to peanuts and you don't know that this has peanuts mixed into it, then you're, you're just causing an havoc for your body right. and it's not good. So I think everybody should pay attention to what you're doing. And if you're not cooking what, you know, the stuff yourself, and even then when you're cooking, what, you know, cooking the stuff, you still have to read what's in there, but you need to know what you're actually putting in your body in order to get, you know, substantial, you know, wellness from your body, especially when you're trying to perform well on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, whatever activities you're doing. And if you ever feel like, oh, my body's not actually, it's feeling sluggish or it's not, you know, performing an optimal at an optimal, you know, efficiency, then you need to actually know, like, think about what are you actually doing? What are right. you putting in your body? And what are you actually doing to your body? Like, and then also, like, are you getting enough sleep? Right. Are you drinking enough water? Like, your body does not run off just fumes. It has, to, you have to treat your body like you would treat your car. 
You have right. to, you know, you have to tune up your car. You have to make sure your car has oil in it. You have to make sure everything is together. So you have to do the same thing to your body if you want to keep it running at an optimal, you know, you know, efficiency. So that's exactly right. And there's more and more linkage between things like your emotional state, your alertness, your productivity based on what you eat, when you eat, and then of course, importantly, how much sleep you're getting. And I think one of the reasons why the United States is having some of the issues it's having, and they're complicated, so there's a lot to it. But one of the reasons is over the years, we moved from making everything yourself to making less and less yourself and that has decreased to the point where a lot of families never use their kitchen or at least hardly ever use their kitchen and so i can guarantee in those households they don't know what it is they're eating they go to a restaurant or uh, fast food or whatever it happens to be and they just consume whatever happens to be there whatever tickles their fancy and they don't recognize that they are eating a boatload of salt, a boatload of sugar. They're eating massive amounts of food that they shouldn't be eating and that their stomach hurts. And that's actually funny because a lot of little children will complain and have bathroom issues. And that actually will progress long after it should of course when you first start to feed children solids and all that good stuff you should expect obviously because their stomach starts having to actually work instead of processing some you know nutritious dense calorically dense liquid which is very easy to process into something else obviously you would expect some issues there but that should not still be happening when your child is one, two, three years old. That it is for so many people should really indicate that there's something wrong with the diet that the adults are probably consuming, but certainly that they're feeding the child. And I think one of the easiest things you can do in this modern world is control what goes in your mouth. And I say that also recognizing so if, if we sat there and I laid out all the receipts, my food bill, but you have to keep in mind, I have four children, all of whom are in their teens and three of whom are males in their teens. And if you know nothing else, I will just let you know, teenage males will eat you out of house and home. <laughs> you got lucky there. You got yeah, lucky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't worry about that. Even though my one of my youngest daughters, she he just eats and eats and eats and i'm like no you cannot eat everything <laughs> you know you have to you know moderate everything she eats because she just eats so much of just because it's there right and just because it's there doesn't mean it's good and that's another thing that i like to do is kind of like knowing that i like pizza sweets and all of that if that's all there for me and it's kind of tempting but even then like i've gotten to the state where i don't really need it like yeah. if i feel like i need a snack well, give me a little snack but i won't overdo it but with little kids they're like oh donuts here let me get a donut all right oh there's more donuts let me get another donut let me get about four of those let me get about five and then before you know it they needed the whole box yes that that self-control is oftentimes lacking and it's one of the things that comes much later on in life it's and that's why it is important obviously as adults to go through and monitor what our children are eating and and all of that good stuff but it's also important to set that good example and monitor what we eat and just make certain that what we eat agrees with us that it has a, that we have a positive relationship with our food and positive relationship includes a lot of things to include obviously eating the proper amounts like you said, no one's talking about eliminating everything. No one's saying right. no dessert ever. I mean, you eat cheesecake from time to time, I believe, right? Yep. I can't because, well, I can't eat yeah. the store-bought stuff. I could make my own, uh, but I'll make other things. I make cakes and things of that nature instead um, and ice cream. And it's delicious stuff. 
I like to eat it. But we don't eat anything. I, the nice thing about when you do it yourself is you control how much sugar you put in and things of that nature. And I'll tell you what, once you wean yourself, I don't know if you've noticed this. Once you wean yourself off of restaurants and fast food and pre-cooked meals, you would be amazed at how salty and sugary and nasty most food tastes. Yeah. Um, so a lot of times I, I will say that because of some, as of now, it's been harder to prep. But normally I prep my own food, but it's the same stuff every day. So it's a lot easier. Most people think it's a lot harder because even when I go to uh, different restaurants, you know, every time I go to a restaurant, I eat the same thing, salads and maybe a little fries or something. It'll just be a salad or something because I like the salad, but the salad's a little bit not how I make it. Even though people say, how can you mess up on a salad? Well, a lot of times they do a little bit too much. They may put a little bit too much, uh, you know, dressing on it. So a lot of times I tell them to put that to the side so I can determine how much dressing I'm on it and then some of the stuff that they put on there may be a little bit saucy spicy to you know just overdone um so you know yes like it's better to prep your own food because you know how much salt or or, or seasoning that is going on your food and for me i been i try to steer away from salt even though sodium is in everything but i try to steer away from salt because of how how much it runs up my blood pressure um so I definitely will say that, you know, it's better to actually cook your own stuff and know what you're actually putting in your body. Like I said, again, if we go back to the cheesecake and I'm going to go back before I even go to the cheesecake, I'm going to go back to uh, why we have the stigma in a way. If you're, say myself, if I was to 300 pounds and I decided I wanted to go uh, get a trainer. I go to a trainer and ask the trainer what I should do. Now, most of the time, the trainers are not nutritionists, but a lot of times they do try to give you nutrition advice. Right. So, which I, I really feel like you should go to a dietitian and then, you know, have a trainer if that's the case, because a lot of the times they don't do both. However, you'll have people who train you who will tell you that you can't eat none of that. You have to eat just this chicken and broccoli and rice. Give you this bull crap, you know, <laughs> bodybuilding diet that you cannot sustain for a long time. And it's not healthy, by the way. Like, just because you see those bodybuilders that are on stage in peak position, like, you know, just look straight it to the bone, doesn't mean that it actually is healthy. It is not a healthy lifestyle. And the things that they have to go through for that, it's ridiculous. Even talking about somewhat starving yourself, okay? You're you're portioning yourself out too thin. Um, and you're only doing that, you know, they're not doing that year round. They're only doing it for, so my thing is, you have bodybuilders or trainers telling people that you can only eat this. Right. And then and even if they do get it to a sustainable body fat percentage, maybe 10% body fat, and they look very awesome, how long are you going to sustain that? You're not going to want to eat chicken and broccoli every day. You know what I'm saying? So my thought, if I'm training somebody, you know, make sure you get in your necessary, you know, macronutrients that you need every day. But don't feel free to have a little slice of cheesecake. Right. A little slice. Right. Not big slice, those che you know, little cheesecake, whatever tickles your fancy, you know, feel free to have something that you like, enjoy it. You know, you're eating it every day. That's fine. I eat some stuff every day because I need to make sure that my body, that my craving is pleased. So, you know, and in, in that perspective, I feel like it's nothing wrong with it. But again, I go back to eating in moderations. You you can't overdo it. OK, you, you have to <clears throat> contain yourself. You have to have discipline. Yeah. You know, and then the the thing, the key to success on this is consistency. You know, if you're consistent with your diet, you're consistent with or nutrition, you're consistent with your nutrition, you're consistent with your training and your regimen, you you will see you will see some changes in your body. And it may be slow. It may, you know, it may not be as fast as you want it, but as the years go by, you'll start seeing more muscle, more your body fat go down and that's what you're looking at. And a lot of people look at the scale and don't really look at their body. It's not about the scale. The scale will make you want to pull out your hair. It's about the way you look. How right. do you feel in your jeans when you put your jeans on? Are they too tight? Are they too small? Or are they too big? Are you like, ripping your shorts? You right. <laughs> yeah. Or are you ripping through your shorts or your shirt? <laughs> I mean, literally. I literally wear a medium and I kid you not, the medium fits like the smalls. So I have to get a large now in order to feel comfortable, but even the large still kind of feels big to me. But 
a medium is small on a person that only on myself that weighs about 190, 189 pounds. Like I'm in between, I fluctuated between that. So like, that's crazy, right? So you know that you're gaining more muscle mass, you're not right track. Do not let that discourage you, but you still have to know where you're putting in your body. Right. Well, and that's, that's actually one of the really interesting parts is a lot of people forget so if first and foremost, you have to have the discipline to eat properly, but that same discipline requirement carries over to the gym. You have to have the discipline to actually show up, the discipline to do the work and the discipline to push past levels you didn't think you could surpass. You, you can't just stop because, oh, well, it's starting to hurt. You have to keep going. So, so long as, of course, what we're talking about is the muscle hurting and not joints or things like that or, or anything crazy, obviously. But, right. but by the same token, if you remove everything rapidly, you are very unlikely to keep it. And as you said, a lot of the bodybuilders you see doing these competitions, they don't keep that diet. And that's something they usually don't talk about. They only hold that diet for a very short period of time, enough to drop their body weight down, which is starvation. But they're starving themselves to the point where they lose the fat, but not to the point where the body starts consuming their muscle. Muscle, yeah. That's right. And that's, that's, that's not the way you want to do it because what we're really after, what you're probably really after is improving your lifestyle and improving your health. And we talked about it once before, but contrary to popular belief, this isn't going to extend your life. What this extends is your healthy lifetime because the United States has gotten to the point where most people spend the last six years of their life very ill very yeah. ill and you don't want that i mean there's there's no pleasure in that kind of thing and instead if what you do is you take the approach where you make it your lifestyle you make it something you do every day and you make it something where it's not drudgery you're not bored and i will tell you so my wife of course is latina and i i not not to sound bad or anything, but if you want to know someone who can cook something, the same general thing, a million different ways, talk to someone who does old, old school kind of stuff. I mean, in, in her case, it's amazing. The neat thing is like we have these uh, a taco, which is really just this. Uh, it's a lettuce leaf boat and then you put your stuff on and I mean, it's mm -hmm. absolutely phenomenal and all now then you can switch that up and instead you make your shells or do whatever. And again, we can't use corn or any of that kind of stuff. So ours are using flaxseed with uh, cassava or tapioca or almond flour, but I can't eat many almonds. So cause it thins out my blood too much and then I start uh, bruising. Yeah. yeah. And my blood pressure just drops. So, but different flowers like that. And, and now, unfortunately, the way the United States is structured, uh, the federal government subsidizes most of the wrong foods, the stuff that's really unhealthy and makes you really fat really quickly. Uh, a lot of your grains will make you really heavy, really fast. So if you want to drop weight, cut your pasta down stop eating so much corn and all of that other stuff. But at the same time, what that means is now you've got to fill that void with other things that cost more. It actually costs us more than our mortgage. Granted, I live in a place where housing prices are low, but every month for a family of six, we pay more for food than we do for our mortgage. It's kind of weird, but I guess that's what happens when you can't eat what most Western uh, Westerners eat these days. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, you know, I didn't, I didn't, it's just even funny. I didn't know you had a lot of things that you couldn't eat. But again, like that goes back to people actually knowing their body. Yes. You know what you can and cannot eat. So, and you know what's in these foods. So it, it is just amazing, like that you can cook like different things. Oh, you can do all but, kinds of crazy stuff. 
Yeah, like I'm not a really great cooker. So like like I said, it goes back to the fact that I'm lucky that I like beans and, and rice and stuff like that. So that works for me. Now that goes back to saying that if I would if I was a meat eater, I would be a lot bigger in weight and, and muscular than I am. And but that also, you know, there's this there's a stereotype that because you are vegetarian or vegan or whatever, that you cannot gain a nice size of muscle. And that's not right. I don't know. You look as weak as a kitten to me. (laughs) Yeah. I've seen how much you lift. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. We're not going to see, see, not going to get into weights things, but again, if we go back to weights, it's depending on your program and your regimen and what you you're doing. (laughs) That's exactly right. So that's exactly right. We have two yeah, different goals. I, we have two different goals, but at the same time, I am trying to get to a certain strength, but it all depends on how, like when you started yeah, and how long you've been doing it. And in your case, you've been doing it for a while. You've yeah, been doing it, what, since true. you were in diapers? Like, yeah. I mean, yeah, you're, you've been lifting thousand pounds for him since he was in diapers. So The joy I mean, of hey. having a Marine father <laughs> and a soldier for a mother. <laughs> that, that, that's awesome. So, it's 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 awesome but like i said in particular most people when they see me they'll they're like hey man you know like wait you're vegetarian like there's no way you can gain that because they think i'm supposed to be a a, a toothpick yeah and i'm like no like but you have to count in the fact that yeah i'm getting as of now i'm getting leaner and leaner because i'm doing it slowly but you also account that i'm natural and i still have a little bit of body fat on so you know you still have to account that, but at the same time, there's a lot of muscle, and people are like, no, you can't gain that much muscle as a as a, a vegan slash vegetarian or that. No, you got to eat a bunch of meat, and that's the way you get muscle. That's not always the case because, as yourself, maybe you're not, you know, you don't really care about steak and and no. uh, even though that's not really good, but you don't care about those chicken breasts and stuff like that. You yeah, know? I don't you, do that. You know, <laughs> yeah, so. You know, and but I, I tell people, like, I think that a lot of that stuff is not really healthy as you think. And then you don't know really whether it's being like, are they actually processing that food or are they actually making like how many chickens do we have? You, they've been killing chickens forever. How many chickens do can you really make it to the point that you have to process it? Yeah, that's the, yeah. That's exactly right. And it, it's it's funny because if you look at it, they have to go through a large number of chickens. I They talk about hundreds of millions, I think, a year. Some ridiculous amount. And that's crazy. And that's not even counting. I guarantee that's not counting places like South America, where they eat a lot of chicken. But their chickens are different. Their chickens are much smaller than chickens you see in the United States. And the same is true with Asia. And across Asia, they... Animals in the U.S. are much heavier, and that's including wildlife, too. There's an interesting study that has shown that as Americans have grown, shall we say, heavier, so have our pets, but so have wild animals. I imagine a lot of that's because, of course, they you know, rummage through waste and things yeah. of that nature. Yeah, definitely. I mean, they have more to eat mm-hmm. than you may see in other different like countries. So, I mean, they're always going through the waste and different stuff. So, and then people are throwing food outside, mm-hmm. you know. So, you know, even though that's not good, but the animals are eating it. So, you're going to see a lot of bigger animals than you normally would see in different countries. So, yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. It's 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 totally different. But again, like I, I just feel that. You, you, again, it goes back to what we said. You need to watch what you eat and know what you're putting in your body because yeah. you don't know what these processed food. That's why I don't like eating McDonald's. I don't. And I've done. I was in a, at one point I was at a kick where I was actually eating all of that stuff and it was not healthy. My blood pressure was to a point where I could have a stroke um, and it was just getting very serious. And, my, and I wasn't really feeling good about myself and I wasn't like feeling optimal. Like I felt like I was sluggish all the time. I didn't want to do nothing. I was lazy. Um, so in that perspective, I had to slow it down and cut back and go back to my normal, you know, things that I normally do as I was younger. I would go, you know, go back to eating healthier food, which I've always been eating, like vegetables. That's something I like. I can eat vegetables, the same thing every day, and I'm fine with that. 
but that also keeps me in a good shape and it keeps me active and I'm always moving. So um, better than what I was maybe like six years ago, but yeah. Well, and I, I don't know about you, but like uh, when I was getting my eldest to eat things like broccoli and cauliflower, we used to play games and the whole imagination thing, I imagine that's to a degree kind of cliched, but we would yeah. pretend like he was an ogre and the broccoli were spring trees and yeah. and cauliflower was or winter trees. And so he'd have to, you know, stomp around and, and eat his broccoli and eat his... And then, of course, peas were bushes things of that nature. So you make a little bit of a game of it because a lot of children don't enjoy eating the various vegetables out there. And you'll have parents who will capitulate and then the kids eating just one or two things. Obviously, I'm not going to tell someone how to parent. We all do the best we can. But I just, it was important to me that when he didn't like some of these foods. I try to introduce it a different way. And I mm -hmm. say all this because I think the same thing applies even as an adult. So there are a large variety of foods that you probably don't like, but that are healthy. I hate watermelon. Actually, I don't like any melons. I do not like melons at all. Not cantaloupe, not honeydew, not watermelon. I hate them all. But, I like watermelon, but I don't like the seeds. I, I, see, I, I knew you did because you'd mentioned that before, but I eat it anyway. And I eat it anyway because it's good for you. Watermelon apparently, supposedly, is especially good for males. Um, but it, it's just one of those things where I don't want to say I grin and bear it because over time you, you hate it less. It's just... It's it's not it's not necessarily a pleasant experience, and that's uh, just because I'm not a big fan of it. I don't like sweet food. It's yeah, probably a good thing because I mean I'm never gonna get addicted to sweets if you don't like sweet food. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah, no, I agree. I don't like salty either. That's why I, I I do not add salt to anything. We don't add salt to a single thing. Uh, I don't add sugar to most anything. So. It's a different way of cooking, and it's all based on what you like and what you don't like. But I'm the guy who's eating venison and bison, and I love bison. You probably haven't had it, but it's, no. oh, it's so delicious. My ancestors were right there. They had that one down pat. Well, every time you say bison, I'm thinking about uh, this big fluffy animal mm -hmm. that comes off of, uh, what is it, Avatar? <laughs> Sorry, you know, that's, I think that's what they called it, a bison on Avatar. But Did they? I don't know. I never saw that. Yeah, yeah. So every time, you know, I think of that, when you said that, I was like, yeah, this is definitely seemed like a big fluffy animal that flies around, <laughs> which we know animals don't fly. I mean, well, they do fly, but not like a big, like, come not on, a bison. You a big, <laughs> if you see something as big that looks like a bear flying in the air, that's uh you know something's going on in the world you're probably about to get your ass kicked <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's gonna be a bad day that's so yeah be we, a bad day. <laughs> <laughs> and that that's kind of what it reminded me of when you said that but no i've never had bisons before so oh it's good i've also had so ostrich is also good but it's impossible to get here and i mm. my understanding is it's extremely expensive too yeah yeah, I know, I know. It's not your cup of tea. No, no, no. You know, like, and I, I'm not against people that don't want to get anybody to think that. I'm not against people that eat animals. Oh, or no, not no. that not in that area because people, when you think of people who are vegan or any of that stuff or anti, you know, animal eaters, whatever, they think that, you know, that just because you eat this type of food that you had to be for the cause. I don't believe in that. Like, if that's what you want to do, that's fine. Um, I just just for some reason i was born this way i don't like it it's just it's just not good for me and then the chewy feeling is just uh it's not great at all so um but if that's what tickle your fancy great for me but 
I don't eat it, so. <laughs> we actually don't eat much meat either. Uh, I would say we're more uh, stereotypical Mexican fare in that most of the food we eat is more what you would hear pretty common with Mexicans. And by that, I don't mean like the Taco Bell stuff, that there's nothing <laughs> Mexican about that. That is not, no. And I didn't even think that was Mexican. When people say that, I'm like, no, this is dog food. This yeah, is not this good. Is dog food. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. But and it does not make you feel good. No, no, it doesn't. No, it really doesn't. That's just foul. But wait, wait, have you, sorry, before you go on, have you seen the way it looks? It looks like slop. It looks like something they give you when you're in prison or something. Like, oh, it's so that bad. Is horrible. All right. I don't My understand I how they that. became a thing, a, a big thing. I really don't get it. And everyone imitates yeah. them. And like their shells are, t oh, there's nothing appealing about them. And they're so greasy. God, don't get me started. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I used to think Taco Bell was the world until what really little, when I would really look at it, especially if you go at night, yeah. they really, what they really don't care, they give you food that they are going to throw away anyway that's been sitting there. And it, it just, when I looked at that, I was like, they're feeding me slop. Like, this is not good. Like, this is horrible. It, and it, tasted horrible and then it would make me sick <laughs> so i had to stop eating that stuff that stuff is disgusting well it, it is i will say it's it's funny so you mentioned uh you know a lot of people sit there and they assume oh well you don't eat much meat therefore you have a certain ideology or whatever we actually don't like i said we don't eat much meat either and that's part of that is because our diet already is expensive and a lot of the meats that we would eat again, like bison, etc., happens to be more expensive meat. So we just don't eat much meat to begin with. Um, but it, it's, it's interesting because you'll have these people sit there and say, oh, well, eating meat is destroying the environment and all of this other stuff. And I always laugh because when you look at their diet, for example, they're eating bananas in winter strawberries in winter blueberries in winter vegetables in winter not not dried vegetables fresh vegetables in winter yeah. and i'm going if you really want to talk about what's destroying the environment let's start talking about shipping and actually fruits and vegetables most of them aren't shipped they're flown because they can't be shipped because they would rot yeah. and so these things have to be flown in constantly so let's start talking about destroying the environment Oh, and by the way, they're cutting down a large portion of the rainforest all around the world are being cut down, not for meat, but for banana plantations and various oh, and soy is another big one. Huge. I can't eat soy, so I'm going to attack it all day. No, I'm, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> but if you eat soy, you're an awful person. <laughs> ah. I mean, but you know, there's soy and everything, and I'm not really a soy lover, by the way. Um, that was something that I was told that was good, like the soy meat, like plant dish type of stuff for you know plant yeah. lovers. Yeah, the the fake it, stuff. It's disgusting. Oh, you it's know. so uh, owl. <laughs> I, I tried, and I was like, no way. Yeah, and all the fake meats are just the worst, the absolute worst, and they're bad for you. At least all the ones I've ever seen, so much salt and sugar and fat, and then heavy on beans. So if, if you've ever seen, there are a lot of vegans who are particularly heavy, shall we say. You know how to get really heavy really quickly? Eat a lot of carbohydrates. And guess what beans are? You know, beans will make you really heavy really quickly. So you talk, I said, you know, Mexican fare, right? And everyone automatically, their brain goes through beans. Mexicans don't eat that many beans. Just like the Japanese don't eat that much rice. People exaggerate what they see. Again, I lived over there. <clears throat> People exaggerate what they see. And it, it's just funny to me because when you start talking about central and south americans their diet in general is very different than what you see in television and beyond the fact that they eat a lot of insects uh things things like that horrible no <laughs> insects but i do have to touch bases on something and then i'll let you get back to it. so just in case because somebody's going to say that what Ron, that ranio said he eats beans um 
in that particular case, yeah, again, it goes back to how much you eat. But mm -hmm. for me, uh, I'll eat a certain amount of beans because that's the only way I get my protein, but it's dependent on what the beans is. But again, beans do have a lot of sodium. They, they, they do fill you up and they will make you big. But again, that's, that's the only thing I can eat to get protein. But you got to think about how much, like how much I have in my diet. We're right. talking about beans and rice and, and, and salad. Like I particularly are not going to blow up, but if I'm only eating that three, three times a day in a big meal with other things, around it you're not looking at when you're not going to be big big but if you're eating beans con and we're Tons talking about big beans. bowls like yeah tons, that's a different story but i want to just specify that because somebody's going to probably say well ryan you eat things why is he not big and isn't that not good and no i'm not saying it's a great thing but for me in order to get proteins lentils and these type of things i have to kind of eat because they have a good amount of protein but you still have to eat a number a good portion of them but Again, it helps me build muscle. Well, and and actually to that point, I eat beans, but like you said, I don't eat many. I just don't. Yeah. A lot of people assume, oh well, vegan is healthier, and the truth is that's not. The, the, no, being vegan or vegetarian isn't inherently healthier. You can eat Doritos, and it's a vegetarian meal. It's not a healthy meal. No, you can it's not. eat. You can eat those fake burgers. Those fake burgers are a lot of beans and soy. You want to get real heavy? Go with those fake burgers. Eat a lot of pasta. Things like that. These heavy carbohydrates. Whereas if instead you ate sweet potatoes, sweet potatoes are carbohydrates. But your body processes them, processes them differently. A lot different. Yeah. Exactly. And, and it's actually very good for you yams in general are very good for you so and that doesn't mean like we said i'm not saying oh get rid of your beans get rid of your pasta so on and so forth i eat beans ronald eats beans ronald's fit as a fiddle not a violin I'm pretty good but, a but again this is the man who's coming from a man who has 12 at troll pack abs so <laughs> uh, you know hey yeah, I got my normal six pack, but he has twelve pack. So evidently, whatever he's eating, I want it. <laughs> Probably oh. not the bison, but yeah. <laughs> oh, bison is fantastic. <laughs> that's that's not in my vocabulary. Let, let's change that. <laughs> but just to just to specify again, what you were going off, and I'll let you get back to it. Sorry. Um, yes, uh, as we were saying, we don't. But I, I wanted to. Just, to throw something in there, a monkey wrench in here. So I was thinking about something that you were saying with the carbohydrates. Now, if you really look at my 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 nutrition plan, it's a lot more carbohydrates than it should be. And a lot of times when you see vegans and vegetarians, it's going to be a lot more carbohydrates than it would be protein. Right. But it doesn't mean that there you can't get proteins in the carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean that it's not there. You got to understand that because when we're talking about calories in versus calories out, so. If we go back to what you were saying, there could be somebody that eat pizza and Doritos all day, but it all depends on how many calories and what they're doing. Calories in versus calories out, and they can still be shredded. Right. So a lot of people don't understand that. That doesn't mean it's good for them. That doesn't mean their body is going to be, they're going to be, you know, active and optimal. But at the same time, you have to think about it. If you're going to be fit, if you want to be fit, it doesn't really mean just, oh, bad food. Because everybody sees everything is bad. If that's the case, well, everything's bad. Right. Anything you can really think about, it could be bad for you. Right. It doesn't mean it. Right. You know, so the biggest thing is, you know, how do you want your body to perform? You're going to eat how you want your body to perform and you can get in shape in any type of way. But again, it goes back to calories in versus calories out and monetizing how much you eat, you know. So yes. I just wanted to throw that in there because I don't think people understand that. And they think that, oh, yeah, well, if you eat carbohydrates, you know, Duran says that that's this bad thing. You know, you eat a lot of carbohydrates. Well, I am most of my meals are carbohydrates. Sorry. You know, and. But at yes. the same time, there's protein in it. Yes, it, it really comes down to what you're eating with what, how you're eating it, how often you're eating. It's all very yep. complicated. So, you know, I, I mentioned I do, we'll use almond flour. We also use coconut flour and we use cassava oh, yeah. flour. Now, if you don't know anything about those things, I will tell you they're carbohydrates, right? Yes. And that's actually yes. what I use to make my pizza crust. And they're the, delicious. Uh, the coconut, yeah. That's like right. Oh, pie, yeah. And I make yeah, it very Mexican. Delicious. That's right. Yeah. Yes. It's delicious. Yes. And it's you better than 
cauliflower. cauliflower. I hate yes. that shit. Yes. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Come on, man. It's snow. You're an ogre, Ron. You're an ogre, Ron. You'll, you, yeah, I forgot. I forgot. You got to smash down those those uh, winter trees and eat the people. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no people. For no people. You're, you're, no, no. you're a vegan ogre. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to eat a lot of, like, grass. <laughs> yeah. You won't even eat so, the cattle in the fields. If you see me anytime, you see me eating grass and you what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> see, and that's... But that all comes together and really... I will say one one other really important thing is you'll see bodybuilders who are eating 6,000, 8,000, 10,000 calories a day. I mean, a lot of those guys are on steroids too. But but the point there being bigger people, as in more muscular people, have to really consume more to fuel their body. But it is a careful balance because what you don't want to do is eat so much of the stuff that's going to slow you down. Your body needs carbohydrates. They're absolutely positively vital. You can't cut them out completely. That's always a mistake. But recognizing that at the same time, you have to be selective about what you're eating and when you're eating it, especially relative to when you're going to go exercise and what exercises you're going to be doing. And this gets back to what you were talking about with working with someone who really knows what they're doing so that they can help you navigate those waters and make it a habit. Make it something that isn't painful to you. And if, like, I sat there and I've, I've told people the different things that we make and, and really the basal ingredients we use, you could count on two hands how many ingredients in general I use for most cooking. And that's throughout even a month. I don't use much if you exclude, of course, you know, actually, even if you include spices. We don't use much because there are a billion different ways you can make put these ingredients together and so long as what you've done has been well thought out and you pay close attention to how it makes you feel and how you perform on it if you're working especially with a professional you're going to be okay and it doesn't matter if it's a meat-based diet if it's a plant-based diet if it's you know vegan vegetarian or what have you so long as whatever you've done, you're very careful and you're working with a professional who can ensure that you get all your nutritional needs. It really, the only way you can go wrong is portion. Yep. And a lot of people don't stay in line with those, mm -hmm. you know, what your new, you know, dietitian is telling you or the trainer who is a dietitian slash trainer is telling you so. You know, but a lot of times at the same time, you have to kind of figure out what works best for you because yes. they don't always know what works best for you. They may tell you things and I went to a dietitian before and they told me things that I just could not eat. It just yes. was not sustainable for me. But you kind of also got to know, again, know your body, know what you, you know, what you would like to eat, but make that fit for you. Like again, this has to be something that you're going to want to do for a life, mm -hmm. lifetime, a lifestyle. Like it has to be something that's going to be consistent. Otherwise, you won't get the results that you want. Right. And you'll be continuously looking for those crash diet plans. And I want to get fit in like 30 days, 90 days. And it never really happens the way you think. And a lot of those models you see on TV, they are already fit. Mm -hmm. Or they're taking something, they're already fit, and they, they, they're they fooling you. Even yes. the people on Instagram or on Facebook, they're, they're already fit. They, yes. they didn't just uh, did this crash diet in 90 days and they got that way. No, it's not. It doesn't happen that way. It's a slow steady process it's a marathon not a race that's exactly okay? right this is a lifestyle this is a journey you're on a journey enjoy it because exactly. once you get to that yeah once you get to that your your goal you know and, and you may not get to it you're you may not look like on a coordinator but you're oh, it's awesome you're going to be the best you you've ever ever you know been so basically compare yourself to yourself Yes. Not anybody else. Yes. Yes. Going back to what we talked about a few episodes ago, that's exactly right. You really cannot sit there and compare yourself to other people. It's like, I don't play it, but I'm told in golf, it's the same thing. You're playing against yeah. yourself. I don't know if you play golf. No, nah, but I, I get that concept. The only golf I've ever did is putt-putt. That's it. <laughs> putt-putt is great, but there are so yeah. few places you can find that actually do it, let alone have good, good putt-putt yeah. or mini golf, as other people will call it, yeah. courses. 
I, that, that is one of those things. It's it's fun for the whole family, but by golly, there aren't many. There really aren't. Yeah, yeah. Try playing whirly ball, even though it's not a, in uh, golf. But I've never seen nothing like that. It's like you just put two things together and put yourself in a, a what do you call it? A, a mini cart. Yeah. Like, I mean, what the hell? Who thought that was great? I mean, it, it can be a lot of fun, but who thought it was great to literally use a scooper and throw it and throw it to the like the square, and then everybody's riding mini carts? Like, what the hell? Yes, I, I would rather do putt putt, mini golf. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> but that, that, right. no, no, no. That's <laughs> that was funny. I, it's, I guess, just to end things off, I want to reiterate. Whatever it is you do, you need to do it carefully. You need to do it selectively. You need to pay attention to how your body feels and how it's reacting. And you need to set goals. So we've talked about that before. Always have goals and then give yourself time to achieve that. And like you said, don't look at the scale because especially if you're working out, that scale is going to be deceptive because as you're dropping fat, you're increasing muscle. And that's going to mean that you're actually going to get to a point where your weight stops going down and then it starts actually coming up. And if all you're using is a scale, then that's going to really throw your mind for a loop. And, and definitely Think about the water weight. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And definitely don't pay attention to other people, how they look, because at the end of the day, the only person you can legitimately compare yourself to was you yesterday you a year ago make sure you do take those videos like we talked about a few episodes take those pictures just catalog that process and feel free to catalog your statistics your data statistics on yourself and and let that help remind you that you're making good progress and it does take a lifetime i mean and that's what we're really after here we're after a lifetime and it's a lifetime of positive success a lifetime of happiness and a lifetime most importantly of health and if yep. what you're doing is not achieving those things then adjust it adjust it to better fit you and fit your needs help as well and the one thing I have to say that goes before all of the things that Duran or you know Duran just said is that you need to love yourself first. Mm -hmm. You need to love who you are and stop like as we said, stop thinking about or listening to what everybody else said. You know, it doesn't matter if you if you even if you're big and you're four hundred pounds, you still have to love yourself. In order to achieve those goals that you set, you have to love yourself first. You have to learn to love who you are, and that goes for everything you're doing, whether. It's it's, you know, we're talking about trying to get in better shape or whether it's in your field that you, you know, your career that you care for, you have to love who you are. Mm -hmm. You're, it's only one you. There yeah. can be no other you, you know, so you have to love who you are and then you can start focusing on the areas that you need to fix. And, yes. and then you'll start appreciating those things because if you don't, then no matter what you do, you're always going to feel like I could be better because you don't love who you are. Yes. You know? We are all created equal and we're all going to be different. Body types are going to be different types of people, but that doesn't mean that there's nothing wrong with you. You're, everybody's unique. So my thing I wanted to end off with is not only taking what Deron said, but making sure you love yourself first and then follow those next steps. Yes. And then you can see yourself achieving those goals and not feeling like, oh man, I'm never going to get to them. Just, just, just consistency. It's a marathon, not a race. Mm -hmm. That's and right. with that being said, I am Ronio. I am Duran. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel and like, subscribe, comment, everything. Please. We, we would love that. Um, and we'll see you on the next episode. Have fun. Sorry. Did you just take a deep breath? Are you waiting to say were you gonna say the uh, the line or did you want me to say the line? Cause it sounded like you were like, I, I don't know if I want to do this. I I was contemplating it, okay? Uh okay, I can say the line. All right, that that works. All right. Do we have to start over or do you want me to just say it now? That's fine, just go. <laughs>